Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have heard it said that, wa that blood is thicker than water. And it is true. It is literally true. Blood is more viscous. Blood is more dense than water. Blood is thicker than water. Sometimes figuratively as well. But not all the time. I have an acquaintance who on his Facebook posted the other day in big bold letters. If your family does not accept your sexuality as they, gay, bi, trans, or whatever, I'll be your new daddy. I'm here for hugs and encouragement and advice. And I was like, yeah. That's exactly what it takes to raise a kid. You just hug them and give them a little encouragement, pat them on the head, and there you go. I, really, what I wanted to do was send him a tuition bill. I was like, there you go. Have at it. You want a parent for a while? There you go. And it's kind of funny, because I know he couldn't pay it. I probably couldn't pay a month of it. I'd be much more surprised if he'd be willing to pay any of it. I'd take a cell phone bill, to tell you the truth. But he's more than willing to take over parenting duties for me. Dweeb. Blood is thicker than water. Apparently, unless you're talking about human sexuality, and then I guess the family has no role at all, right? Because sex is the new American god. Sex is what defines identity. Sex is what controls identity. It is the overarching governing principle over which millions of Americans orchestrate their entire lives. And it's pagan and demonic. You are a baptized child of Christ. That water is what defines your, your identity. It's that water that controls everything in your life. That water's thicker than blood. As a baptized child of God, you do the will of God. Now, I still have a biological family, don't get me wrong. Three of them apparently are still in bed and coming to later services, but they will be here. And I love them, and I care for them, and I pray for them, and I pay for them, and I serve them, and I sacrifice for them. But I do the same for you, and you do the same for me, O oh, family of God, who are identified by the moniker Christian. That is your identity. You who do the will of God. Today we have one of those wonderful Markian stories in which we have a story inside a bigger story. We have a story of a continued demonic fight in the ministry of Jesus as it plays out in Jesus' ministry, but also as it plays out in his actual real family. Jesus has returned home, and his mother and his brothers have come to collect him because clearly he is out of his mind. They have heard what Jesus has been saying. They have heard what Jesus has been doing. They have heard the stories, the news has spread. Jesus is teaching, and he's teaching with authority. And what they mean by that is he's teaching with his own authority. You hear this played out in Scripture all the time. You have heard it said, but I say unto you. In this, Jesus is reinterpreting the scriptures, and he's doing so by his own authority. And he's taking to task the tradition of the elders. And he's taking to task the tradition of the elders because the tradition of the elders is wrong. They are wrong. They have interpreted scripture wrong. Jesus has been baptized. And I know you all know that because we read the story just a couple of weeks ago. In John chapter, or Mark chapter 1. 
When he came out of the water immediately, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending upon him like a dove and a voice from heaven, you are my beloved son and with you I am well pleased. Jesus has been baptized with water, but also with the spirit. Just like you have been baptized. With that same water of God, with that same Holy Spirit of God. Now granted, the heavens didn't rip open and we didn't have a dove come fly down here in the middle of it. But God did speak those words over your baptism. Jesus is reinterpreting scripture according to the Holy Spirit, according to the word of God, as it was supposed to be. He has assembled himself a right strong crew of men, 12 of them, half of them hulking working class brutes, right? Fishermen. Some of them are older, some of them are younger. Matthew, the tax collector, is well-connected, probably a little on the wealthy side, and better educated than anybody that you could even imagine. Jesus is healed on the Sabbath. Jesus is healed on the Sabbath. And he has reinterpreted the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath, the man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was God's gift unto man. Jesus is vocally and openly cast out demons. Clearly, Jesus is out of his mind. Or maybe it was his mother and his brothers that were out of there. There's an absolute break here. There's a break here between the scribes who have been sent to investigate Jesus. They feel that Jesus is in cahoots with the demons. A demon by the prince of demons. Demons obey him. That's, that's what they charge him with. And they begin to say this. They, this, this charge dogs Jesus' ministry throughout his ministry. It's clearly blasphemy, not just blasphemy against God, but blasphemy against Jesus Christ himself. It is an outrageous accusation. It is an outrageous accusation that Jesus is casting out demons because he's in league with the demons. It's like my friend offering to parent my children. My children, your children, anybody's children, right? If, if you, if your parent disagrees with your choice of sexuality, then I'll be your daddy. No, you won't. You're ridiculous. I know you're not going to. You may encourage them. You may encourage them to dishonor me. You may run me down. You may, may, may encourage them to go off and be on their own and, and just pursue life without any parental guidance at all. But you're certainly not going to parent them like a parent does. You're certainly not going to die for them. You're certainly not going to sacrifice for them. You're certainly not going to bring them into your house and, and buy a bigger house so that they can have their own room, be fed and clothed every single day of their life. It's outrageous. Jesus is in league with Satan. Are you kidding me? It is an outrageous lie. And it is a lazy and useless verdict. Jesus is unamused as well. He responds with a, with a fabulous piece of rhetoric. He makes three statements, three somewhat parallel statements. Statement A is the general maxim, which is always true. Statement B can be understood either as a similarly general statement worded with a future indicative main verb, or it can be seen as a future condition pertaining to a future action. I know you're not following all this, it's fine. C is a simple conditional statement in a particular case, indeed the case that is under discussion right now. So then I'm going to translate that into English for you here real quick. Jesus says, in effect, how can Satan cast out Satan? Do you not know basic principles of warfare? A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Furthermore, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Given that, and then turning to the question of hand, my supposed alliance with Satan himself, if statement B in this particular case, if Satan has arisen in my ministry against himself and he has divided his forces, then Satan is literally of no effect. Then Satan is literally finished. He has destroyed himself. He is completely and utterly undone. Statement C, but that assessment is not true. 
since Satan is still alive, since Satan is still active, since Satan is still a powerful force, a force that I, as Jesus states, that I am currently in battle with, then your statement is categorically false. And when you tell people that I'm in league with Satan, you basically say that you're a liar. Because I can't possibly be. You prove it not to be. There's an absolute break here between Jesus and the scribes who have come to investigate him and have apparently wrapped up their investigation. But there's also a break here with Jesus and his family. They think he's out of his mind. I propose it's they who are out of their right minds. More specifically, because they do not know. They don't know. They've not listened to Jesus. They do not know the mind of Jesus. They do not see with the eyes of faith. They do not see what Jesus sees. They do not feel what Jesus feels. They do not know what Christ knows. Because they have not been baptized. They are at a disadvantage. They do not have the Holy Spirit that guides them and instructs them and guards them and leads them in all truth. John said, I've baptized you with water, but he will come who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. You brothers and sisters of Christ have been baptized with that Holy Spirit of God. Baptism is not merely water. It's water used according to God's command. It is water that has been connected unto God's word. This is water that forgives you your sins. This is water that delivers you from the hand of Satan. It literally delivers you out of the kingdom of death and hell. This water is part of Jesus' combat against the forces of sin and death and hell. And it grants eternal life. It grants salvation unto you who you believe. Mark 16, 16, our Lord says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. This is your identity. This is the overarching governor of your life. As a baptized child of God, who does the will of God, we see this played out in two other places in Jesus' ministry. Mark chapter 14, when Jesus makes, makes preparations to celebrate the Passover, he celebrates the Passover with his disciples, not with his family. That's what the law required. That's what Moses told them. When you celebrate the Passover, you, you celebrate that according to a family unit. If your family unit's not big enough, you can add another family unit to it. Jesus ignores that entirely, and, and he celebrates the Passover with his disciples. Because these are his family. Not those that disagree. Not those that don't believe. Not those that think he is out of his mind. Because water is thicker than blood. Baptism is thicker than blood. We are Christ's family. We are Christ's family. We are brothers and sisters of the Lord God Almighty. We are brothers and sisters of each other. We are the ones that do the will of God. We are the ones who live in this eternal life. Mark chapter 16, verse 7, Jesus' resurrection. They saw a young man sitting on the right side dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said unto them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. Tell his disciples and Peter, not go tell Mary, not go tell the brothers, don't go tell his family, tell his disciples. Those who have the mind of Christ, 
Go and tell those who have the mind of Christ that he is risen. Go and tell his disciples who are his real family. Go and tell the people of God who are his family. Go and tell the heirs of eternal life who are his family. Go and tell those who do the will of God who are his family. We who are the brothers and sisters of Christ, because water is thicker than blood. Baptismal water is thicker than blood. Because it grants us eternal life. Mark chapter 13. Be on your guard. For they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must be preached, proclaimed to all nations. And they will bring you into trial, and they deliver you over. Do not be anxious beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deceive brother unto death, and father his children, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you'll be hated for all, for my name's sake. But the one who endures unto the end will be saved. As a baptized child of God, we do the will of God as Jesus told us to do. And we revel in that will. Occasionally that's going to bring us into conflict. Sometimes it'll bring us into great conflict. And although we don't seek out that conflict, when it comes, we will not shy away. But be the brothers and sisters of Christ. Rely upon our identity as the children of God, baptized, redeemed. For death is nothing more than the gateway to eternal life. Our gift through baptism in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.